Good evening, folks. Aaron Dore here, policy advisor with Wyoming Gun Owners. Guys, there's a lot of stuff going on right now in the fight for gun rights we have to talk about immediately. It's a breaking news story. I want to get a watch party going before I begin this broadcast. Give me a moment to do that, and we're going to kick off this video. There's some stuff happening you guys need to be aware of uh, right now tonight. So get signed in. Let me know where you're watching from. Post your location in the comment section. I'm going to drop some links into this broadcast right now on the watch party and in the comment feed as well. Uh, once that's done, we're going to start this broadcast off just in a couple seconds. Get signed in, guys. Let me know where you're watching from. And once I get my final link posted, we're going to get this going. You guys have been hitting us with a lot of questions on this, for a lot of you have anyway, over the last uh, 12 to 24 hours now about – HB 59. You guys are all know what we're talking about. This is the disgusting, disgusting fix Nick's Diane Feinstein backed gun control bill. We've been warning you guys about ever since last session, ever since last session, I was in the Capitol and that Nephi Cole, that greasy little bastard with the, uh, the a lobbyist in the Capitol telling us how he was going to try to push fix Nick's legislation next session. We've uh, warned you about that for, for over a year now. And, and we're here. And we've been here for a while. As you guys remember, got this article here. This was November 5. In the interim committee process, you guys defeated this. Okay? They had this go up in the interim committee. WIGO members beat the snot out of it. The news, this is the Powell Tribune. The news said... During the summer, Second Amendment hardline groups, very proud to be called a hardline group, Wyoming gun owners began rallying against the bill, saying it could lay the groundwork for government-sponsored gun seizures. And, we, and we, the bill was done. The bill was done. But we warned you guys about swamp creature idiots like disgraced former sheriff, now state rep, Bill Pownell, and about the, uh, you know, the swamp monster himself, the swamp monster. Himself, Senator Von Flatteren, the former Democrat turned independent, turned Republican, trying, trying, trying to get into office. We warned these guys we're going to try and push this bill again. And in this case, sadly, we're correct. Because just yesterday, HB 59 was filed for the 2020, the upcoming 2020 budget session. Sponsors are Senator Von Flatteren. The Crypt Keeper, whatever you want to call him. The guy is trash. What can I say? Uh, you got uh, uh, Bill Pownell. You got Representative uh, Berlin Game, Kirkbride, and Stiff. The biggest backstabbing tool in the entire capital. In the entire capital. So, guys, we're going to break this bill down for you in detail. But whatever you do, whatever you do, I need you to send off your email. I need you to take a moment. That's a pre-written email above this broadcast and in the comments section. It's right there. The work has all been done for you. All you have to do is enter your information and hit send. And your email automatically goes to your state rep and your state senator. It's instantaneous. It is instantaneous. But you got to do your part and fire off that email. As you're going to see, you can also hit them on Twitter. You can do it on uh, video messages. You can do phone calls. It's all set up. It's all automated. It's all online. It takes seconds to make your voice heard. So here's, here's what's going on. They have told you and they have told us that, oh, no, no, no. Fix Nix is good. Fix Nix is good because it gives a process in there. It gives a process in there for people to get their guns back so that we should be happy. Representative Stiff. This backstabbing fool who did, a, the, did his best to undermine Stand Your Ground Law in 2018 has the gall to come on our Facebook page and lecture us about all the good things that are in the bill. Makes me sick. Makes me sick. And he's one of those people. He says, oh, no, no, no. There's a lot of good in here. There's a lot of good. It's a typical government elitist swamp creature losers. They try to hide what they're doing. They try to hide what they're doing. So after they give a process on how we can get our guns back, hang on a second, what's my stupid chairs being dumb? After they do all that, maybe it's stiff down there, little guy. No, uh, they, they, they try to claim it's a good thing. But what folks, what it really does, 
What Fix Nix ultimately does is it allows liberal as heck judges, it empowers them with the ability to single-handedly make the decision that you shouldn't have guns anymore before you've ever been convicted of anything and put you on the prohibited persons list. You'd be done for a lifetime under this Fix Nix bill. Done for a lifetime. Now they say, well, but it's, there's there's adjudication. There's adjudication. It's not that bad. It's adjudication. I'm just going to be straight up with you guys. I don't even, I don't trust court judges anymore. I don't trust liberal activist judiciary anywhere, anytime. We all saw what happened with the UW case. We know what's going on. These judges all across the state trying to screw us over. We know that we have the, uh, the Supreme Court right now in Wyoming trying to undo standard ground law. So anybody with any common sense whatsoever knows that the judiciary is a hostile antagonist to our freedom these days. If you guys agree, give me a thumbs up. Maybe it's just me. Maybe they're all great people, but I don't think so. I don't think so. And the way this process works is these liberal court judges would then turn to a liberal as hell mental health shrink and order that shrink to interview you and uh, if that shrink, who was educated at a liberal as hell college somewhere, UC Berkeley or something like that, or someplace in Oregon, over in Portland, whatever, if that person thinks that you're not okay, you're done. You're done. It doesn't matter if you've ever uh, committed a crime or not. It doesn't matter if you've owned guns for 50 years. It doesn't matter if you, if you have a perfectly, perfectly clear uh, criminal background. It doesn't matter. If this little staffer, this little, you know, early 20s punk child mental health professional thinks that you are an extremist of some sort, you're done. You're done. And I don't know about you guys, but I don't trust these people. I don't trust them. Some of them might be good people, but most of these people are terrible people. They're evil people. And for all we know, and I think it's very safe to say, for many of them, the fact that we love God makes us crazy. The fact that we love our country makes us crazy. The fact that we love our Second Amendment freedoms makes us crazy. The fact that we love our president makes us crazy. This is a culture war, and they hate us. And they'll do whatever they can using whatever tools they have to take away our freedoms. That's how it works. If you guys agree, give me a thumbs up. Maybe I'm just ranting to myself tonight, but that this is a war. This is a war. And all we are doing with HB 59 is giving these incredible status monsters more tools to take away our guns. And you're never going to get them back, folks. You're never, ever going to get them back once they're gone, once they're gone. So guys, your email has to be sent, and I mean now, to your lawmakers. There's more, there's more. What this bill also does is it totally paves the way for, uh, for a full-blown red flag gun seizure statute. That's the whole concept here. It is normalizing the idea that we could lose our guns having committed no crime, having done nothing wrong based on the say-so of one person, in this case, a mental health staffer. In the case of a red flag gun seizure, it could be anybody. It could be anybody. And so it's, all just, it's just open the door for a full-on attack on red flags. And guys, we all know that swamp monster losers like Senator Von Flatteren and Bill Pownell would love to do exactly that. You know, here's the other thing too. This bill is just a placeholder bill. It's what they call it. It's a placeholder bill. They want to do so much more, and they will, but they first have to start somewhere, and that is what this bill is all about. Someone put a great comment in there. The fact that we love baseball and apple pie makes us crazy in their eyes. No kidding. Love that. Love that. So what this is going to do as a placeholder bill is it's going to be in there in this one format if it if we can't stop it. And then later on, they can come back and they can immediately work to lower the threshold of what behavior 
can have you become prohibited. Let me give you an example. My brother, Chris, runs Ohio Gun Owners. And right now in Ohio, after the, sh the shootings in Dayton last uh, was it August, Governor DeWine, a Republican, and Republican bill sponsors in both chambers are pushing for a bill that would make it that much easier to red flag somebody in Ohio. They call it pink slips out there, pink slips. And it, folks, it is so low, it is so easy now that if you drink too much in your own home on the weekend sometime, you could be added to this list and lose your guns forever. You understand that? If you if you drink too many beers and someone and your wife your ex wife calls you in, in your own home, not driving on your own couch, they're gonna say with their pink slip laws in Ohio, ook that person he can't have guns anymore. See that's how it always works. They try to get in the door with some version of what they want and they expand it as fast as they possibly can. And folks, that is what Fix Nix does. It gets these status people's noses under the tent, and they're going to do all they can to expand their hold on our freedom as fast as they can. We have got to stop this. We have got to fight back against this as hard as we possibly can. Again, the pre-written action center, folks, it's all up and going. It's ready to go. Pre-written emails, uh, pre-written tweets. There is a phone call script. It's all right there. It's all right there. Take action. Make your voice heard. Michael says, I have an ex-girlfriend who would love to do that just to be vindictive. Oh, I know, Everybody knows someone like that, Michael. Everybody. Everybody. Someone is commenting on the watch party right now about the, uh, uh, Daryl says, these shrinks can be bought and paid for. Exactly. And here's the thing, folks. Has anybody, ever, maybe in college, like I had to, anybody ever seen the DSM manual? This is the this is their uh, this is their manual for diagnosing, uh, you know, mental illness in America these days. Anybody seen the DSM lately? I have, folks. They are normalizing and and okay with freaking pedophilia in these DSM manuals these days. These people are sick. They're twisted. They're evil. And and some liberal court judge is going to turn to one of those sick puppies and say, hey, take this, you know, middle-aged, you know, classic white American male from, from Rollins or from Cody who loves God, loves his guns, loves his flag, loves his president, loves his state, and you go see if he's okay. I can guarantee you, folks, if that happens, you are done. You are done. So many good comments here. Uh, let's see. John says, I'm in Gillette, and no one up here liked Pownell uh, and how he got elected as sheriff, let alone a state rep. I'll never know. Well, there's a whole lot going on when it comes to uh, Representative Pownell, and this is before my time with Wyoming gun owners, which you know what? I can run Google, too. And you should take a moment and, and look into that. I mean, here's a guy who, as sheriff, I think the best I could tell from the, from the, the articles I read, uh, his son, I believe, I, I, I'm not 100% sure, so I could be wrong. I want to get that said just in, in advance. But the way it sounds, he fixed a DUI for his own kid. That's the way, as, as I remember, that's what it said. And uh, it was so bad that I believe it was even the attorney general's office uh, intervened and stepped in and told the governor that he needed to be removed from office. Now, at exactly that time, Pownell uh, won his election the first time to the state house and resigned his office as sheriff anyway, or did not seek reelection. Uh, anyway, and so it, it didn't like really end up mattering, but it was so bad that a state agency, a state, um, some kind of an advisory panel or something with the AG's office, had to tell the sheriff that uh, they had to uh, boot him out of office. Hang on a second, once guys, give me one second here. I'm on Facebook Live. You good? All right, it might. All right. My wife always calls. I'm doing Facebook Live. She never checks. I love her. What can I say? Um, so he's a, he's a he's a piece of trash. He's a big old-fashioned, you know, elitist, smug type of person who thinks the laws apply to you, but not to him. And when his kid gets in trouble, he fixes it. He orders the charges to be uh, assigned to somebody else or whatever it was he did. And now he's the same guy who's trying to ram fixed nicks in the law, guys. And don't forget, these are the same people, like Von Flatteren, 
who voted against SF-71 last year, our bill to end gun-free zones in Wyoming. They voted against the bills to, uh, to fix the preemption problem that we have in Wyoming. These people are pond scum. And they're only Republicans that can't get elected if they told folks who they really are, which are big government status Democrats. But folks, here's the good news. We have primaries coming up. It's an election year. I love election years. I love the primary process. And for all you state reps who end up watching this broadcast, you state senators who are watching this broadcast, just don't forget about old Fred Emmerich. Don't forget about Fred Emmerich. Because Fred Emmerich thought he could screw over gun owners too and fight against gun rights and all the rest of the crap he did. And Wygo took extreme pleasure and drop it about 6,000 pieces of mail in that district and a whole bunch more and uh, exposing the heck out of him with all kinds of online programs. And guess who ain't in Cheyenne anymore? Fred freaking Emmerich. And that's not the only scalp that Wygo has on our wall. And uh, we're not going to stop. And we're not going to stop. And I, I love election year. I love it. It's a great time to remind these people who they work for. They're so arrogant. They're so smug and they have to be reminded guys that's why wygo exists so but look it only works with your support that's how it goes guys fire off your emails that's number one the link also has a link there to become a member of wygo we need you to be involved guys in the fight for the second amendment at joinwygo.com it's very simple joinwygo.com we got shirts we got decals we got different types of swag whatever you want it's up to you but get involved in this fight. We're spending a ton of money on our brand new digital ad campaign that launched tonight, trying to shut down Fix Nix. But we need your help. We need your help. So go there and get signed up today at joinwygo.com. And lastly, if you're not getting updates from Wygo by text or by email, we're doing all that these days, guys. Go to wygoupdates.com, wygoupdates. The link is in the broadcast right here, Updates. Dot com and opt in to receive our messages. Opt in to receive all of our stuff, our text alerts, our email alerts. It's all right there. It's all free. It's all wonderful. It's beautiful stuff. It's easy to use, easy to read, easy to take action. It's all right there. But if you're not getting it, folks, you're going to get left out. So jump in, guys. Jump in. Invest in this fight. Invest in our state. Invest in your freedom. Do it for your kids, if nothing else. Do it for your grandkids. But invest in this fight. Make your voice heard. We don't, if we wanted to live in a state like Colorado, we'd move the hell to Colorado. If we want to live in a liberal bastion, we'd move to Colorado. But we're in Wyoming. This is supposed to be where we have freedom and lawmakers who respect it. And these people are not respecting it. And that's got to change. That's got to change. Lori says, we signed up. Aaron have not received any updates. Lori, you should have received an email today at around 4.30. If you did not, then ping me offline. Um, send me a friend request on Facebook. You guys all can do that too, by the way. Hit me up on Facebook and let me know if you did not get the email, Lori. You should have today at around 4.30. So uh, check your inbox and make sure. Guys, I got to bounce. Have a great night. Share the heck out of this video. Tag your state rep in the comment section. Make sure he knows you're watching him. Fire off your email. Get involved in this fight, guys. Sign up for updates. It's all right there. It's all ready to go. Get involved, guys. More to come. Have a great weekend and take care.